your heart feel strange inside it flutters like soft wings in flight love is like a butterfly a rare and gentle thing not a psychologist and author of the book you and your relationships the motto is don't worry about it worry us about it and the subject love sex marriage and relationships have you got a personal problem is something worrying you is something worrying your partner Ring. Oh. Don't put it off, Ben. I'm listening to it. You were asleep. I know I was. That's why I wanted it on. When it's on, I can fall asleep while I'm listening to it. But if it's not on, then I haven't got anything to listen Maria, to. Maria, please I... don't explain or I'll never sleep. <laughs> <laughs> you never sleep. I've had my wakeful nights. I keep them to myself, that's all. Sorry. It's all right. Good night. Good night. <coughs> Some husbands would ask why their wives weren't sleeping. Some husbands would. <laughs> why aren't you sleeping? <laughs> And some husbands would stay awake long enough to hear why their wives weren't sleeping. I am awake. And why are your eyes closed? Because my mind is willing to listen to you, but my body isn't. Doesn't matter. You're not interested in what happens to me during the day. Why should you be interested in me during the night? There. I'm awake. It's two o'clock in the morning. The rest of the world is asleep, but I'm awake. Now you're annoyed. Yes, I'm annoyed. I'm awake and I'm annoyed. You needn't sit up all night on my account. I'm not doing it on your account. I'm doing it because I like it. <laughs> Men are funny things. When you don't need them, they buy you flowers. When you do need them, they sit up in bed with their arms folded. It's an unfriendly thing, arms folded. Rhea, I realise that your head is full of things to say and that your mouth is even more impatient. But it's the middle of the night, and there are at least 14 light hours in the day, during which time other heads and mouths will be willing to cooperate. You're never here. Oh, I see. It's all out war, is it? You're never here. You never talk to me. You don't understand. You'd rather take people's teeth out than take me out. <laughs> the fact that I'm here for lunch every day and dinner every evening, that I took you out to dinner last week and the week before, that I talk to you whenever there's a pause long enough to get a syllable in doesn't count, I suppose. <laughs> You know it all, don't you? I'm in some sort of trouble here. Yeah? I can feel it. It's not the ordinary kind. The kind one cures with a box of chocolates and a theatre ticket. It's something tucked away in her mind, brooding and fermenting. Oh, God, I can see hope running towards the horizon with its arse on fire. What do you think of that? Income tax form. Name, Michelangelo Binotti. Age, 397 years. <laughs> Address, the Pizza Palace Paddington. <laughs> Just fun, Thomas. Just we, fun. We are in great spirits today, sir. Yes, I am rather pleased with myself today. <laughs> uh, well, aren't you going to ask me why? Foreboding prevents me, sir. I saw her car this morning while you were in the bank. I don't think you should go on, sir. I might disapprove. Oh, you will, Thomas, you will. 
I put my diary on the floor of her car. Sort of just beneath the passenger seat, but not quite, if you see what I mean. Very adult, sir. Very adult. Well, it could have fallen there during one of our bouts of unleashed passion, don't you think? I had the idea that you've given up all ideas of this lady, sir. Oh, I have, Thomas, I have. But you know what an unselfish chap I am. I like to share things, Thomas, especially the suffering. Well, I do hope that you haven't included any vivid accounts of your unleashed moments with the young lady who applied for the job of secretary. No, 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 Thomas. Whatever the deed, one must keep an element of decorum. It's just a business diary. But she'll need to contact me, won't she? Phone, perhaps. And, sir? Uh, there is no and, Thomas. One step at a time. But what a pity I won't be in my office all afternoon. She'll have to get me at home, won't she? Just fun, Thomas. Just fun. You said, thou shalt not commit adultery. Well, I've done that. Uh, what I mean is, I haven't. But you don't say anything about what comes next. I mean, the world is full of people who don't take any notice of you and they don't seem to come to any harm. But there are a few like me who are confused and scared. Why do I feel like this? Why have you made me look at a man and turn into a driveling, car watching, park walking, phone waiting, sleepless fool? Tell me what to do. Please. Tell me! <laughs> Lovely fascists. <laughs> hey, I wouldn't mind a pair of those jeans from next door. Twenty-nine fifty. Forget it. Well, maybe if we're really nice to them, they'll buy us a pair. <laughs> One four seven. It's us. I'm sorry, one at a time. Uh, we're together. Right. One person per one problem per one session. Okay. Time money saved, sweetheart. Brought our A9s. They seem all right. <laughs> Anything else? We need trousers. <laughs> Let's see. Parkinson, 27 Jade Road. Right. right. Posh area. So why do you need trousers? It's got something to do with the law. <laughs> You've already got some. The thing is, when they're in the wash, we haven't. So these are the only ones you've got? You've worked it out. <laughs> we uh, figured trousers could be described as a necessity. Yes, they are. Like leather jackets. <laughs> OK. So instead of food, we bought leather jackets. I'm holding back the tears. <laughs> Listen, mate, we're British subjects, right? We were born, bred and disillusioned in this country. <laughs> if it wasn't for guys like us, you'd be out of a job for a start. Oh, and don't remind us of the 20 or so quid a week you're giving us, because we need that for the bus fare to the job centre. It's king and country, that's what we believe in. England and the people. So, if it can't give us work and it can't give us a future, the least you can do is give us trousers. <laughs> and you better make it quick, because we're running out of underpants. <laughs> How much do you think you're going to need for these trousers? 29.50. <laughs> trousers, 29 pounds, 50 pence. Each. 
I told you, one person, per one problem, per one session, per one pair of trousers. <laughs> I wonder what you're thinking. Are you pleased with your green life? Would you rather be a climbing plant? Clambering and spreading up some wall, exploring the windowsills and rooftops, locking the gutters and playing hell with a damp course? <laughs> I know how you feel. <laughs> Oh, why is it when I put you in the oven you look like lemon sole and when I take you out you look like an old banana? You finally managed to make custard that flows. <laughs> it's mayonnaise. I oh, know, we're having custard on the salad. <laughs> oh, the kitchen defeats me. I mean, why can't I get anything right? Yesterday, my spaghetti looked like draft excluder. <laughs> Today, the lemon sole is lying there, practising how to disguise itself as a loofah. <laughs> and as a finale, the custard and mayonnaise swap jugs. <laughs> Apart from all that, what sort of a morning have you had? Average dull this morning, haven't you? Did you go out? Well, only to the shops. Well, I always go to the shops. Yes. Is lunch ready yet? Almost. Why don't you make your phone call? Hmm? Well, I'm in no hurry. My next patient isn't due till three o'clock. Oh, that. That's all right. It doesn't matter. It's not important. Anyway, she she wasn't in. <laughs> <laughs> go. On. Ninety-four pounds for servicing the car. Oh, it's a lot, yes. You didn't tell me what kind of morning you had. Oh, teeth as usual. Bad teeth, big teeth, broken teeth, teeth that fall out, teeth that won't budge. <laughs> when some people open their mouths, it's like coming face to face with the Acropolis. <laughs> I was thinking about last night. Oh, I'm sorry. I couldn't sleep. I suppose I was agitated because you could. I was thinking about what you said about me not being interested in what you do during the daytime. Oh, did I really say that? Hmm? I wish my tongue would ask my permission before it speaks. <laughs> no, it's true, nevertheless. Well, what I mean is, we tend to live our own separate little plastic bag existence. Oh, we make feeble inquiries about life in the other little plastic bag, but we don't really listen. Not with intensity. Potatoes? Thank you. From now on, I'll listen. Oh. I don't think I could cope with you listening to me. I mean, it's a whole new thing, being listened to. <laughs> I'm used to being a tune in the background. Now I'll have to get the lyrics right. So let's start again. What sort of a morning have you had? What did you do? Well, I went uh, to the shops and I went into that little church. Church? Um, yes, I do sometimes. You haven't told me that before? No, well, I... I... What did you go there for? To confess your sins? <laughs> <laughs> to talk to whoever's listening. About what? About me. Peace. Thank you. <laughs> Isn't that strange? The last time I went into a church on my own was when I was a boy. I'd been extremely rude to my mother, made her cry. <laughs> I've no idea why I went. Guilt, I suppose. Right, aha, just in time. Hello, folks. 
You see, I remembered what you two said about becoming vegetarian, so there's a salad. Is this brought about by reasoning or fashion? Oh, reasoning, Dad. We were watching this video around at Guy's Place, all about factory farming. Do you know what they do to pigs? They get this Adam! <laughs> it's bad enough buying pigs and cooking pigs without knowing what they do to pigs. Oh, you see, that's the whole problem. People just close their eyes. And may we close the subject, please? Your mother and I will respect your decision to become vegetarians as long as you respect our decision to remain cannibals. <laughs> I wouldn't mind if we all became vegetarians. It would save me going out every day cattle rustling. <laughs> Must you lunge like that? This is a meal, not bayonet practice. <laughs> Nut cutlets. They are. Hey, do you make them or buy them? I made them. I followed the recipe very carefully. The only thing is, I didn't have any nuts. <laughs> so they're nutless. Nut cutlets. <laughs> You mean they're just blobs of mashed potato? <laughs> well, call them blobs if you wish. All I know is Henry Moore couldn't have put more into them than I did. <laughs> what do they do to pigs? Adam! <laughs> Hello? Oh, um, uh, yeah, hang on a second. I'll take them in the other room. Oh. oh, yeah. Me and Russ have got the chance of a window cleaning round. Some guy we know is just packing it all in and going off to Australia. Well, we need some cash up front and we're away. How much does he want up front, this guy? 50 quid for the ladders and 100 for the goodwill, but the buckets are thrown in. <laughs> right. Buy yourselves a chamois leather each and you're in business. What? You... Oh, no, come on, Dad, we couldn't take it from you. <laughs> oh, I think perhaps you could. <laughs> It'd be better than having you hanging about the streets. Are you sure, Ben? Are you sure this is right? It's work. That's what's right about it. Yeah. And as Dad said, it's better to hang around people's bedrooms and hang around the streets. I didn't say that. <laughs> well, no, you know what I mean, though. Oh, yes, I know what you mean. You're already planning to disrupt the private life of the entire neighbourhood. I can see it now. Half-clad lovers leaping over garden hedges. <laughs> hey, Russ, guess what? Dad's giving us some money for the window cleaning round. Lending. Lending, sorry. <laughs> that was Jeannie's mother. Jeannie's mother? Jeannie's had the baby. I've got a son. <laughs> well done, Russell. <laughs> oh, you're OK, sunshine. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> I feel, uh, different. Hey. Mm. Oh, I'm sorry. God, where am I? What you were saying? What was I saying? When middle age comes knocking, you said, the thing to do is not answer the door. Oh, oh yes. Then you fell asleep. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least when I woke up, you were here. <laughs> Why are you alone? Well, I've told you I'm divorced. Yes, but that was three years ago. Doesn't fit, a man like you. A man like me. I think I'll have that put on my tombstone. Here lies a man like me. <laughs> you can't be serious, can you? Not anymore, no. Leonard. Sophie, don't ask me this question. I'll probably lie. Are you, though? Are you playing games with me? Oh, uh, answer that for me, would you? Please. Oh, um, uh, I'm not in. Hello? Are you? Playing games with me? Not with you. No. Are you coming in? Yes. I was just trying to get my friend again. She must be away. Do I know her, the friend? No, she's not really a friend. She's an acquaintance. It worries me, the situation of Russell's. Most people leave school, get a job, get married, and then there are kids. Trust mine to do the whole thing back to front. <laughs> and here we are, drinking to the occasion. They'll be all right. The young always find a way. You're so casual about things. When a problem comes, you just stand and gaze out at it, the way a child gazes after an escape balloon. You come out with phrases like, they're young, they'll find a way. What's happened? Nothing. Nothing's happened. And that's my real problem. 
That's the balloon I can't leave go of. What do you want to happen? Is it more money, a new car, a bigger house, or is it something I can't give you? Ben. Yes? I don't know. Hey, don't you think we look like an old photograph? I mean, can't you just see this on a piano somewhere? And this child, Russell's child, saying, that was Ben, my grandfather, and that was Rhea, my grandmother, taken in their dining room on the day I was born. And on that same day, Rhea, my grandmother, began to leave my grandfather. Ben, what do you mean? Like you, I don't know. I don't know. Ben. Come on, let's go and have that drink. Ben. It's true in a way. I did leave you. Not as a wife, but as a person. I grew tired, you see, of the house and the meals and the futility. Perhaps it was because I looked in the mirror and I saw a sort of funeral on my face, the wandering away of youth, and it frightened me, Ben. It really frightened me. Anyway, I didn't do anything in particular. I just became different. I thought that as long as I was here at food time and at night time and when you wanted me to be, you wouldn't notice. It's going, a different me. Just give me time and the real me will come back. <laughs> hey, we're just off to the off license for some more booze, okay? Isn't there enough here? Not anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I'll get it, you're not fit to drive. Oh, we'll come along for the ride, Dad. Yeah. Hey, hey, we could get acquainted with the highway code. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Go on. It's their last day of youth. Come on, then. <laughs> oh, Daddy, could I sit in the front seat? <laughs> <laughs> Coffee, salt, J cloths, Grandma. <laughs> I'm a grandma. I'm supposed to be pleased. I'm supposed to peer into prams <laughs> and wear strange hats. <laughs> Oh, it's too soon. I'm not ready for all this. I'm not ready for it. I'm not going to do it. Blue hair rinse. <laughs> Elastic stockings. <laughs> thermal knickers. <laughs> like a butterfly, soft and gentle as a sigh. The multicolored moods of love are like its satin wing. Love makes your heart feel strange inside. It flutters like soft wings in flight. Love is like a butterfly, a rare and gentle thing. Love is like a butterfly, a 